Okay, 5.30 now, where's Tim? Unless that clock's fast. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Folks, Mayor Courier is delayed, so we are going to kick off without him per his request, but he will be here shortly. Um, I call to order the Village of Messina Board of Trustees meeting for November 4th, 2015. Uh, roll call. Trustee Alfeld. Yes, sir. Trustee Tarver. Yes, Trustee Chase. Yes, here. And I am here. Uh, just a reminder, silence your electronic devices, please, if we appreciate it. First item on the agenda, approval of the meeting minutes from October 6, 2015. So moved. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Next up, treasurer's report. The treasurer is not able to be here tonight, but she does have an action item that she is requesting the board take action on. Um, it is a subordination agreement. I'll read the, the request. Uh, seek authorization for a subordination agreement dated November 4th, 2015 between the Village of Messina and Seacom Federal Credit Union concerning a note and mortgage recorded in the St. Lawrence County Clerk's Office on August 10th, 2011 in instrument number R-2011-0001823. Um, basically, this is a party that uh, received uh, benefit through one of our grant programs looking to refinance and because we have a lien on the property, she needs our permission to refinance with CCOM. Doesn't change our risk or any loss to us. It's just us giving the okay for her to move forward with refinance. Exactly. All those in favor? Aye. <clears throat> Committee reports, Trustee Carbo and myself. Um, for code enforcement. Just to give you guys a heads up, there's been a, a, over the past few months uh, some pretty standard requests to clear up some language on some codes from department heads. I'm going to put together a, a comprehensive list. Uh, nothing groundbreaking, no dramatic changes, but just things that will help make things a little less confusing in certain uh, areas of the code book. So I'll probably be presenting that to you guys uh, in the next meeting or two. Just wanted to give you a heads up to be on the lookout for it. See if we can just make the language a little clearer. Economic development. Trustee Offeld and myself. I don't, I don't see uh, anyone from the PEC here, so we will move on to fire committee. Uh, we're waiting to hear about the uh, what's going to be uh, re uh, required for the floor uh, stabilization until that happens. We need to get the report. Right? So, so where are we on that? They they removed the tiles. Yeah, we removed tiles, and we have also chipped away the loose concrete on the underside of the slab. <clears throat> now we're looking into uh, a, uh, a product that hopefully will encapsulate anything else that might fall. Nice. We're done with the chipping? Done with the chipping. And uh, we'll get a heads up to Ken and Ted and the rest of the gang before we do anything. Yeah. Awesome. Personnel Committee, Trustee Carvo, Trustee Deshaies. I have Police Committee, Trustee Carvo, Trustee Deshaies. Nothing at this time unless the Chief has something to bring. Uh, not at this time. Recreation Committee, Trustee Carvo, Trustee Deshaies. Uh, I have not met since our last meeting. Next, next Tuesday's recreation. Next meeting we have a lot of report. Perfect. Street Committee, Trustee Offeld and myself. I, I do have some for, for the streets. I met with Matt regarding a safety issue possibly on uh, School Street, Ransom, Nighting, Nightingale area. Um, regarding walkers, um, we've met, uh, we're further researching it, and uh, we'll 
within the next meeting or two, we'll come up with a, hopefully a comprehensive plan on uh, making that a little safer. Water and Sewer Committee, Trustee Opto, and then we'll get there. Welcome. The Mayor, Bridges finished committee reports. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. My apologies. Let the record show that I'm here. Initial public comment period. As always, we ask you to please stand and state your name for the record. Okay, I guess that's me. <laughs> My name is Robin Wolfen. I'm a taxpayer. Um, I help Tom Spinner with his apartments. He has quite a few apartments in town. And we applied for a village rehabilitation, uh, housing rehabilitation grant in the spring. And um, if I could, I, I have some paperwork. I foiled some information after we were not considered for the grant, to the best of my knowledge. And um, ever since we applied for the grant in April, I have been knocking at the door in the town hall, asking about where it stood. Um, my understanding, I read in the newspaper that there were two grants, home grant and the CD. Uh, BG grant, community development block grant, and in the spring it sounded as though there were over $600,000 of grant money. And my understanding was that um, eligible, I'm not sure which grant, I'm pretty sure, if, I don't know if it's both grants or one of the grants, but the idea was that uh, a landowner would pay 25% and then the grant would pick up the other 75% if you were eligible. So we went through lengthy process. We had two buildings on Woodlawn. We had to have our tenants fill out income eligibility statements. I had to entice the tenants to do that. Of course, they don't want to do that. So I gave them gift cards to Mountain Mart. I put everything in self-addressed um, stamped envelopes for the town hall, made life easy for them. And then we started asking, you know, has our grant been considered? You know, I gave it some time, I don't know, a couple months before I went in, but it was due April 30th, and my understanding from Susie was that work had to be done by September, so it was already a little time sensitive. Um, but throughout the summer, we, we got nothing. We got, oh, Dale will call you, um, you know, he's busy, he inherited all these grants, he's working on them, but, you know, even um, Mr. Courier will tell you I, I sent a message to him through Facebook, I came into his office to ask about it. I've been in and seen Susie, I've seen Avis, I've never seen Dale. <laughs> and so after a while I got wondering, what about all this grant money, you know, what happened to it? So I sent a FOIL request in October, and I asked how much were each of the grants, how much did Messina receive, and what were the deadlines for um, using the grants, and who did get the grants, and how many grants are still pending, how many applications are still there and how much money really was awarded. And if you look at this carefully, and I, I hope you do later, you'll see that really like $500,000 was never awarded. So, and some of that grant money, the deadline's gone by to use it already. So the home grant, the September deadline's already passed, and we did not use $114,000 of that money. So, um, you know, that's upsetting to me. And then there's a $340,000 of eligible money under the Community Development Block Grant, and none of that has been awarded. And I even asked for is anything pending, and it was no. So I don't know about our application. You know, what happened to it? And why isn't that pending? And if we didn't get the grant, I can understand, I can sleep with that. If we didn't get the grant, we weren't, maybe our tenants weren't eligible. I don't know. but. I would at least want to be considered for the grant. That's my problem, is I feel like there was never a walkthrough. Dale never came and looked at our building. You know, so who wouldn't want to fix up a building on Woodlawn? I mean, this town, obviously, we're losing jobs, we're losing industry. You know, we talk about buildings in disrepair. I've gone to meetings on blight. I've gone to meetings at the town, at the community center about drugs in our community. I'm talking about two buildings on Woodlawn. So, I, I'm not, you know, it's upsetting to me that here we had money to hand out, and we should even have somebody that's, that's trying to, to, to hand out the money. I don't mean it shouldn't be a hard process to get the money. It should be, you know, somebody 
says, hey, your building looks bad. Maybe I can help you through this, you know, or I, I'm not sure. I don't, you know, I don't know how, how it's all funded, and I don't know completely. I did ask how many hours Dale had spent on it and how much the village paid him, but somebody pointed out that maybe he's paid by grant money, too. I don't know if the grant has administrative costs built into it. I think I, somebody at a landlord meeting recently I went to said they once did get a grant, and there was administrative costs built into that. Um, several of the landlords at the landlord meeting last week told me the same experience had happened to them. They submitted paperwork and didn't get anywhere. So, you know, that's, that wasn't for this particular year, though. That was in a couple past years. But, you know, I mean, I just, I don't know. I'm upset that it wasn't, that our grant, you know, application wasn't considered. I feel like I have made a lot of noise already at the town hall and I've gotten nowhere. So that's why I stand here before you. So thank you for listening. Let me address it a little bit briefly okay, with you. Sure. First of all, I'm sorry that you've gone through this process. We recognize that we haven't maximized the potential in that office. That's why we've been in discussions about uh, trying to revamp that office and change the way things have done now. Um, there was a previous uh, person running that office that was off on long-term disability. So uh, Dale came in and filled in. There was a considerable backlog. And I'm not making excuses. I'm just telling you that that's what was faced. Uh, but uh, without excuses, we have a substantial need to look at the way that's run and do it differently. Uh, it's our hope we'll actually expand that office. You know, we talk about blight and we talk about all the issues in our neighborhood, and that's the best way to address it is through the housing office. Um, so um, I can't offer you excuses. I can offer you an apology and tell you that we're going to try to do it better in the future. And uh, I'm happy to try to set up a meeting with Dale, you and I, so we can get to the bottom of it. I know exactly what happened with your particular incident, but again, I offer my apologies. Thank you. I also own a home on Ames Street that's on the market, and it looks like now probably will be for some time to come. Normally in the past, when I've spoken at these meetings, I've spoken off the cuff, but today, in an effort to stay on point, I've decided to read my remarks instead. At your last meeting, you held a public hearing to discuss an increase in the water rate. During that hearing, I made the comment that it was announced during the 2015-16 budget deliberations, and subsequently in May, when you discussed filling vacancies in the water slash sewer department, that those funds were stable. My question was, what had happened in five months to make the water fund unstable so that an increase was now necessary? Trustee Offeld asked you if he could answer the question. He proceeded to say that at the time of the discussion, it was stated that the sewer fund was stable, not the water fund that the sewer department was where the new person was hired, and that fund, having a surplus, could sustain the new hire. He then stated, does that answer your question? I thought so. After such a condescending remark, I stated he should check the minutes for the, those meetings, as it was clearly stated that both the water and sewer funds were stable. The public hearing closed, end of story. Or so I thought. Fast forward to today. I stopped by the village treasurer's office this afternoon, inquire where the money came from in the budget to pay for the new hire. I was told half of their salary comes out of the sewer fund and half of their salary comes out of the water fund. So in fact, this new hire is having an impact on the water fund that now requires a fee increase to remain solid. What does this political doublespeak look like to the general public? Either at best, Ms. Rothfeld has a woeful lack of understanding of the budgetary process, or at worst, he tried to mislead the public during the hearing. Which, is not, which, if it's not illegal, is certainly highly unethical. What is more disturbing is I am sure that there must have been another board member or a member of the staff who knew that this statement was untrue, but no one felt the need to correct the inaccuracy. So why do you have these public hearings in the first place? We all know the reason. Because a public hearing is legally required because before you pass a local law. The theory behind having the public hearing is so the board can answer the public's questions and hear the public's comments before they take action. A lack of a welcoming atmosphere at these public sessions is what makes people mistrust their government. Why does any of this matter? It matters in part because of the devastating news that this community received this past Monday afternoon. The only reason this is an issue at all is because every extra tax increase, every extra fee, is another nail in our coffin. Politicians love to say, well, it's not much of an increase. It's only a few cents or a couple of dollars on an $80,000 home. The impacts of these increases can eventually be overwhelming for individual homeowners. Many seniors and the working poor find it difficult to absorb these increases on poverty-level incomes. 
And for business and industry, these increases are exponential and just make it more difficult to do business. You so folks sitting up there cannot fix our community by yourselves. You're going to need the participation and efforts of many local residents. Why is attendance so abysmal at these public meetings twice a month? Is it because our citizens just don't care? Or is it because every time they have to come, they have come to participate, to witness, or to engage, they have been made to feel they don't belong, that they are intruding? Please, as you deliberate, as you decide how to move forward, do not stifle public participation. Encourage it. And for God's sake, be honest with us. The next time you're required to have a public hearing, don't have it because you have to. Have it because you want to. Bring people into the discussion. Tap into our community's vast human resources. We may be surprised just how beneficial that could be. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Further public comment. Has the water bill increase actually been loaded on? Like, is that a done deal? It's loaded on the last time. Oh, it was. Seeing that? Old business discussion.